ladies and gentlemen, today uh, we are going to continue talking about ratios. Um, we've touched on it. Uh, we touched on it a little bit yesterday. Today we are really going to get into it. Everybody has uh, a graphic organizer on their desk. We are going to be uh, working on this together, filling this out, really getting into you know the definition, the meaning, uh, and different ways of, of uh, writing ratios. Okay, uh, and I'll let Miss Alton take it from here on what you created to kind of kick it off. Okay, perfect. All right, we have our Cornell notes. Okay, so our Cornell notes always are starting off very focused. Okay, we're we've maybe touched on the topic, but we want to teach you the concept and we want to teach you strategies to understand how to write them or how to solve problems. The model That's of special education I use okay. is an inclusion okay. model. Uh, we co-teach, so all of our special education students that are mild to moderate are in the mainstream classrooms. And so we have to be able to uh, you know, meet their needs in the general education classroom. I would say um, the reason we have a true team teaching mm -hmm. model in her classroom mm -hmm. is because we spend a lot of time planning. Right. It's absolutely necessary if it's going to be a true team teaching model because we have to be on the same page. Uh, we have to know, both know what we're going to be doing in the classroom on any given day. I help her plan um, lessons, activities. She plans some lessons, activities. So it's a very, very collaborative um, effort in terms of the way that we team teach. All right, here we go. All right. How many push-ups did Jay Kim do? Can somebody raise your hand and tell me how many push-ups did Jay Kim do? Clayton. 17. 17 what? Push 17. I'm going to put PU for push ups, not like PU. PU for push ups, okay? Can somebody tell me how many jumping jacks did Adam do? Alfonsina. 18. 18. I'm going to put J, J for jumping jacks, okay? If we want to write this as a ratio, remember a ratio is comparing two quantities or a relationship between two quantities. How can we say this ratio? is 17 push-ups and 18 jumping I'm as jacks. much a part of a teacher in this classroom as Mrs. Moore is and fortunately we have that rapport and um, you know we we are on the same page about what we do so it doesn't I don't ever feel like I'm stepping on Mrs. Moore's toes but I think that comes along with us planning together putting the time in um, and knowing each other well um, and communication communication is like the biggest thing in almost everything so um, the students feel I'm sure that we both have a sense of ownership and they give us the same respect. Um, you know, it's not that they give the general ed teacher more respect than the RSP. Um, it's very equal in there. You know, they respect us the same and they understand that we're both uh, teachers just as much as the other. These two dots, that's called a colon. Okay? So in other words, A to B. 17 push-ups, two, 18 what? Very good, very good. That's can, how we do that. Can I jump in real quick too? Because Miss um, Alton just said 17 push-ups to 18 jumping jacks, and absolutely a, a ratio can can be like that. Now, if we're if we're going to say that, we're not comparing part to whole anymore. We're comparing a part to a what? You will decide how confident you are with what we've been doing, with using ratios and fractions to describe the relationship between a part to a whole. Okay, that's what we've been working on for the last couple of days. Okay, so you are gonna make that decision. It's a big thing to be able to kind of self-assess, meaning you're kind of thinking about how you feel um, with how well you're doing or where you might need help, if you need help at all, and if you feel like you do need help, how much help do you need, okay? So right now, what we want you to do is we want you to think about these three groups, okay? Red group, I need a bit more help from the teacher and then I'll be better at this to try to do some work on your own a little bit um, along with a little bit of guidance still, okay? Um, but the teacher is going to kind of help you reteach the strategy a little bit and then we'll send you on your way, okay? Or do you feel like you're part of the yellow group in the middle? I'm starting to get this and after a bit more practice, may practice on your own and on the computer, I will totally get it. Okay, that's yellow group. Miss Moore, you want to go over green group? Finally, green group, you've got this, okay? You've got this. You can work independently on your own. You've got this. You're going to be challenged. We're going to take that group um, <clears throat> a step further kind of into what we're going to be getting into next week and see how you do with that. Uh, differentiation well, looks kind of like meeting the needs of every student. It doesn't look like it is meeting the needs of every student. So after our focus lesson, we will assess, and based on the results of the assessment, 
it kind of informs our teaching moving into the differentiation. So the way that we break down the differentiation groups is letting them all know this is a safe environment. You can be in any group and it doesn't mean that you're not a good student or you know that you're getting bad grades. It's just that you have to truly understand where you're at right now and what you need the most help with, okay, and what you're going to benefit from the most. So our students are very, um, they feel very safe in our classroom. So then they are able to self-assess and think to themselves, where do I belong? So my red group, um, we are going to be in the back like we are, like I, I mentioned yesterday and like we've done before, okay? But right now I'm going to have my students that felt that they were in the yellow group, that, you know, I kind of got this, but I need a little bit more practice. My students that are in the yellow group, we're going to come over here. One, two, three. And one, two, three. So if you are in that yellow group, find your way to one of these seats quietly in the next 10 seconds. The, the red group is not just uh, resource students. We have a lot of our SPED students that started in yellow, and there were, I want to say, one or two in green. Uh, so it's, it's definitely, you know, differentiation for all, not just differentiation for special education. Elijah, if we want two glue sticks, there you go, to three scissors, perfect. What does the two stand for, Emily? What does a two represent? The what? The glue sticks. What does a three represent, Elijah? Scissors, beautiful. What is the part of glue? Two. Two. Do you know what the hole is, Anthony? Three. Not three. Do you know what the hole is, Irving? The hole. Okay, hold on. Hold on. What I want you guys to do is I want you to count your numerator and your denominator. Add those up and tell me what you got. Add up the numerator and the denominator. Tell me what you got, Anthony. The red group usually is with myself or Mrs. Moore. We kind of, you know, switch. And it's whiteboard, very explicit, very focused instruction, you know, almost back to the day where we taught the focus lesson. I would say the yellow group is a little bit more guided. We use a lot of videos in our classroom to um, guide that particular group. The same with the green group. So it's self-paced, uh, it's self-monitored. They have that accountability piece. Um, they're doing writing, they're listening, they're watching, and they're very engaged. Yes, <laughs> it's just my quick way of drawing them, okay? So you can now compare, because isn't this what you're supposed to do? Okay, Brian, are we good now? Okay, thank you. It's a lot of work, it is. Um, it's a lot of time put in, but it's well worth it, because in the end, Every student is engaged, regardless of the level that they're at or their abilities. Every student is engaged and every student is able to still um, attempt to meet that standard or progress toward a standard and grow because we're providing work for them at what their ability levels are.